Hello students, welcome to the world of biology through Jaguar classes. In our today's class, I will continue with the chapter 10, Microbes in Human Welfare, part 2, in which I will focus on microbes in sewage treatment, in which we will uh, share here primary treatment process, secondary or biological treatment process and biological oxygen demand. In next part, we will see that microbes in production of biogas in which we will see that biogas plant structure and mechanism of biogas production in the biogas plant. Side by side, we will also study here microbes as biocontrol agents to fight against the pest in agricultural processes and microbes as biofertilizers like bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. After today's class, the expected learning outcomes are here. You will be able to define sewage, BOD, biogas, methanogens and IPM. You will be able to explain and describe the mechanism of biogas production in biogas plant and you will be able, able to differentiate between primary and secondary treatment of the sewage. Skill based learning outcomes in which you will be able to use your comprehensive and analytical skills to identify or classify the microbes as biocontrol agents as well as biofertilizers. Today's class with that presentation I am starting the class and now as I have told you in today's class we will focus on microbes in human welfare specifically microbes for improving our environment. Now start with that presentation. In this presentation the topic that we will cover in today's class microbes in sewage treatment and for production of biogas and biological control of pests and diseases with the help of microbes and microbes as biofertilizers. Here is the slide which is showing you the microbes for improving the environment. Here are two examples of such type of microbes. One category is methanogens and the another category is nitrogen fixtures. As you know that microbes have unique metabolic pathways which can be used for improving the environment. In case of methanogens which are free living anaerobic microbes which break down the complex organic matter to release methane and other gases. On the other side nitrogen fixers these are the free living or symbiotic microbes that convert atmospheric nitrogen to readily usable forms such as nitrates. Here in environmental microbiology we can see that applications of these microbes basically here in this chart you can see that application of microbes in sewage treatment microbial degradation of organic matter present in sewage to reduce the BOD biological oxygen demand and dissolved in organic salts. On the other side in biogas production microbial degradation of organic matter present in household waste to produce inflammable gas which is used for cooking or generating the electricity. As well as in biocontrol agents, we are using the microbial toxins against the pest to control these pests in our agriculture processes. And side by side in our agriculture, we are using certain biofertilizers where we are using microbial processes for fixing nitrogen and solubilizing phosphates. Now here in this presentation you will be able to see here the different stages in sewage treatment and how microbes are helpful in sewage treatment. First of all we will try to learn that process. 
Now here you can easily see, uh, see in this diagram there are three stages of that sea-based treatment, primary treatment, secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. Uh, in that tertiary uh, treatment what is going on? Effluent is getting precipitated and becoming disinfectant to purify the water. In secondary treatment you can see that how the solid sludge which is goes into the sludge digesters and the purified liquid through the aeration process converted into activated sludges and then move to the ters for the tertiary treatment and here first step that is the primary treatment where you can see that how the wastewater start to treat by the simple physical process known as filtration now here we are starting from this first step or first stage of sewage treatment primary treatment which is physical removal of particles by filtration and sedimentation here you already know that what is filtration removal of coarse grit and gravel from that sewage water sedimentation which is the removal of gravel and sand by the sedimentation process and clarification is the third step here where removal of large suspended particles with the help of different sizes of masses. Now come to the next stage that is known as secondary treatment stage where we are reducing the BOD. The full form of BOD is biological oxygen demand. In this air First step is aeration where reduction of BOD by the growth of microbes as flocks which are the aggregates of organic matter and that is why this secondary treatment is also known as biological treatment. Here we are basically using the microbes. Here in sludge digestion process anaerobic digestion of the sludge is going on with the help of anaerobic bacteria. Now come to the third stage that is tertiary treatment where removal of inorganic salts and disinfection of the sewage water is going on. Here precipitation process is going on where removal of nitrates and phosphates take place and then disinfection step. Microbial disinfection of the effluent by using again microbial agents such as chlorine gas or ultraviolet, uh, microbicidal agents such as chlorine gas or ultraviolet light we are using in this step. Now, in next part, we will see that here how we can use the bio gas in biogas production how we can use the microbes it is a structure of a biogas plant where you can see that there are three basic components that is the inlet chamber and slurry is fed in uh, or uh, with the cattle dung with the water is known as slurry which is fed in that cemented uh, chamber and that is going to this biogas chamber or dome shaped fixed dome type biogas plant it is shown here and then from here that through this outlet the biogas is released and the uh, remaining or residual part which is uh, spent as slurry is coming here in this outlet chamber. Now biogas as you know that is produced by bacterial action on dead and decaying biomass. It is a mixture of CH4 which is methane, CO2 carbon dioxide and hydrogen H2 gas. It is an environment friendly energy alternative which is used for cooking and generating electricity. <coughs> and here in biological control of pests and diseases in this part you will be able to see that different microbes are also used as biocontrol agents which can be used to fight against the pests and diseases in plants or in different agricultural processes. 
the use of chemical insecticides leads to soil and water pollution as we already know uh, by the process of biological magnification they are um, uh, they are um, harmful for our ecosystem and now microbes can be used as biocontrol agent to control plant pathogens an alternative to this and is, is the use of specific microbes and certain toxins produced by them which are specific to the plant pathogens here are <coughs> three examples of such type of microbes you can see one category of such microbes which are used as biocontrol agents are baculovirus these viruses that attack insects and the another type of example is bacillus thuringiensis and it is a type of bacteria which produces a toxin which is lethal to insect larva and the third example is of trichoderma which is a soil fungi and uh, it is also pathogenic to many mycopathogens now in this slide you can see that we are using the microbes for bio fertilizers also and here uh, you can see that microbial processes such as nitrogen fixation and phosphate solubilization are used to enrich the soil with inorganic nutrients in this category bacteria cyanobacteria and fungi are used as bio fertilizers advantages of such type of bio fertilizers as Uh, you can see here that they do not release pollutants into the soil and they reduce dependence on chemical fertilizers now here in this slide you can see that what are the different types of microbes that we can use as bio fertilizers in our agricultural processes here are um, we Uh, are um, explaining nitrogen fixing bacteria soil bacteria and mycorrhiza first of all let we will start with nitrogen fixing bacteria uh, rhizobium is a symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria you have already uh, heard about it this bacteria in your earlier classes also it forms a symbiotic association with the roots of leguminous plants and the symbiotic structure is called root nodule in this diagram you can see that this is a, a rhizobium bacteria and how it get incorporated into the roots of the legume plants and uh, the, these root nodules are uh, formed here which are the source of nitrogen free nitrogen we can say that uh, that nitrogen compound which will which will be utilized by the plant now come to the another category that is soil bacteria here you can see that the other free living bacteria which help in nitrogen fixation are azo azotobacter bacillus polymexa and clostridium cyanobacteria which are also known as blue green algae they are also playing an important role in the nitrogen fixation in rice fields here you can see that this diagram where cyanobacteria or blue green algae are shown in an electromicrograph now come to know about mycorrhiza mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association between a fungus and the roots of a vascular plant the fungal mycelia on the roots increases the area of absorption uh, the fungi are also produce enzymes to solubilize insoluble organic compounds which can then be easily absorbed by the plants or we can say that by this way plant can absorb more nutrients from the soil and the fungi belonging to basidiomycota ascomycota and zygomycota uh, form mycorrhizal association with these plants and the most commonly used mycorrhizal fungi belong to the genus glomus here you can see that in this picture 
how this fung fungal filament are get attached with this uh, roots of this plant with the help of which it can increases the uh, absorptive surface area for minerals and it can take uh, large amount of minerals from the soil by the help of that symbiotic association. Now have a quick recap that uh, whatever we have covered in this uh, presentation. Here are the main points covered in this topic. Unique microbial processes such as anaerobic degradation of organic matter to produce methane or fixation of atmospheric nitrogen and selective pathogenicity to insect pest are used for environmental improvement, sewage treatment, microbial degradation of organic matter present in seaways to reduce the BOD and dissolved inorganic salts. Microbes such as methanogens, clostridium, coliform and so on are the examples of such type of uh, microbes which are used in seaways treatment. Biogas production is the another uh, application where we can another way or another a role of microbes we can see here microbial degradation of organic matter present in household waste to produce inflammable gas which is used for cooking or generating electricity here the microbes methanogens are used for this process biocontrol agents using microbial toxins against the pest we are using them as biocontrol agent like microbes Bacillus thurigenesis, baculoviruses and trichoderma fungi. Then biofertilizers, as biofertilizers also we are using the microbes, using microbial processes for fixing nitrogen and solubilizing phosphates, microbes like rhizobium, azotobacter and cyanobacteria are used for this process. Here a project work that you can complete uh, after studying this topic that soil bacteria. Here this is a type of project work that you can select as your project presentation also at the end of the session that project you have to prepare. Conduct a search on the importance of soil bacteria in enriching soil nutrients and prepare a project report which covers the following types of bacteria used significance of each type of bacteria, sequence of crop improvement, comparative study using bacteria and not using bacteria. You can collect the information needed by using resources such as internet and books and this is a good topic for your project. If anybody wants to select this topic, you can choose or select this topic for your project also in class 12th. Now, with the help of this media I want to uh, make you understand more about that how uh, these microbes are useful in our bat different types of applications. Now carefully watch and listen properly this media to learn more about the role of microbes in our different areas. Useful microbes. Microbes were the first life forms to appear on Earth. They developed unique metabolic processes to survive the adverse conditions on primitive Earth. Some could respire anaerobically, some could fix atmospheric nitrogen. Today, these microbes are used in a number of processes that help to improve the environment. Click a button to learn more. Now, you can see that how these are used in sewage. Microorganisms are used in sewage treatment to decompose organic matter. Primary treatment consists of the removal of floating debris by filtration followed by sedimentation of solids. The supernatant or effluent is then passed into aeration tanks where the dissolved oxygen concentration of the effluent 
is artificially increased. This favors the growth of aerobic microbes, which break down the biodegradable waste. These microbes form floating aggregates on the surface of the wastewater. These are called flocks. This process reduces the biochemical oxygen demand or BOD of the effluent. The effluent is then passed into a settling tank to allow the flocks to settle down. This sediment, which is known as activated sludge, is then passed into a large tank where anaerobic bacteria further digest the sludge. The biogas released during this process contains methane, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. It is used for energy generation or as a fuel. The effluent is then disinfected by using chlorine or ultraviolet radiations and then released into water bodies. Now, you can see that how these are used for biogas production. Methanogens are a special type of archaebacteria that grow anaerobically and produce methane as a byproduct of respiration. This unique ability of methanogens is used to produce a cheap and renewable fuel from gobar or cow dung. This fuel is termed as biogas. A biogas plant consists of a mixing tank in which dung and water are added. This slurry is then passed into a digester. Here, the methanogens grow on cellulose-rich dung and produce methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. This mixture of gases is then collected and supplied through pipelines. It is used for cooking and lighting. And now come to know about the use of microbes in agriculture. Agricultural chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers cause land pollution eutrophication and also enter the food chain. A solution to this problem is the use of microbes as biocontrol agents and biofertilizers. Spores of Bacillus thuringiensis release a toxin which is lethal to insect larvae of many species. Many species of the fungus, trichoderma, are effective against fungal plant pathogens. Nucleopolyhedrovirus, a type of baculovirus, is pathogenic to many insects. Microbes are also useful for enriching the soil. The bacterium, rhizobium, forms nodules in the roots of leguminous plants and helps in nitrogen fixation. Bacteria such as Azotobacter and Azospirillum are free living nitrogen fixers. Certain cyanobacteria such as Anabina, Nostoc and Oscillatoria also fix nitrogen. Some fungi form a mutual association with the roots of higher plants. This association is known as mycorrhiza. The fungal partner helps in the absorption of minerals from the soil, especially phosphorus. Now, in that way, you have seen that all these microbes are used. Here are some ways in which microbes help to improve the environment. Yes, this is the summary of the that presentation. In sea-waste treatment, aerobic microbes decreases the BOD and anaerobic microbes digest the sludge. And in biogas production, methanogens group of bacteria decompose cellulose-rich dung to produce methane which is a cheap and renewable fuel. And in biopesticides, 
certain microbes produces uh, produce toxins which uh, which kill a specific plant pest without affecting the crop plants example like bacillus thuringiensis and as biofertilizers nutrify nitrifying bacteria fix the atmospheric nitrogen as salts of nitrogen that can be absorbed by plants example like anebana in that way we have completed this chapter as uh, microbes in human welfare and at the end i want to say you that no biological system is complete without microbes as decomposers they are essential for creating sp space for new organism and releasing inorganic nutrients to sustain the biota and as bio as phytoplankton microbes are producers of aquatic ecosystems and most of the diseases are due to microbes as you already know that in today's world in these days a type of our microbe that is covid 19 is had already shaken the whole world but microbes are also producers of many drugs for combating the diseases also and maybe there will be some bacteria some microbe which can be searched by our scientists and our health workers to combat this disease also and um, yeah, hopefully we will get soon the vaccines against uh, this Uh, covid uh, 19 also and with that uh, we will end up our today's class here and in next class we will start with our new unit and complete your whole assignment related with chapter 9th and 10th that i will provide to you in from ncert book also and have a nice day